In this video, I'll show you how you can hide a next button till your learner finishes watching a video. So I've seen a lot of conversations on social media about hiding a next button on a slide until the end of event video in Adobe Captivate is reached. Now, normally with slide video, this is really easy. With slide video, you can simply put a next button at the end of the timeline. Event video doesn't work that way. Event video is asynchronous with your project and therefore we have no idea when the learner is going to reach the end of that video. They have a unique set of controls that allow them to play the video, to pause the video, to rewind the video, to scrub through the play bar. And of course, we have no idea when that next button is supposed to appear. So in this solution, I have something that should work out for most situations. So here's how this works here. I create a slide just before the video that's going to contain my event video. And on this slide here, we have either a begin button or a next button, whatever it might be. And the only thing you need to be concerned about on this particular slide is that your begin button actually is going to go to a mock slide that appears on the slide right after your video. So in this case here, I'm going to change the on success action of my begin or next button to jump to a particular slide. And in this case, slide number three. Let's go down to slide number three and take a look what we've got there. So here we have the slide that actually learners will come to after the previous slide. Now I have a next button on here. And of course you could have other navigation controls as well. First thing I want to do is I want to hide this next button. So it will not be there by default. And instead, what we're going to do is provide this sort of mock video as the only object on the screen. Now, this is actually a series of shapes that I've set up to use as a button. I'm going to select all of these and change the default on success action to jump to slide, in this case, slide number two, where the actual video resides. Now, I need to keep track of the number of times a learner has visited this slide because on the second visit, we do want to show the next button here. So I need to write an advanced action that includes one user variable as well, and it's going to run on enter. Let me go ahead to the project drop down menu and first of all, select variables. From here, I'm going to add a new variable and this variable will be called underscore slide three visit. Its initial value will be zero and we'll go ahead and we'll save that user variable. Let's go ahead and hit close and now we'll go to project again and this time select advanced actions. So we're going to call this advanced action slide three visit and this is a conditional advanced action. So we're going to select the conditional tab and we're going to start off by checking the value of our variable we just created. If our variable slide three visit is equal to zero, which it should be the first time we arrive on this slide, we're not going to do anything. We're just going to increment the value of that variable. So increment slide three visit by value one. Now, if this is the second time you've arrived at this slide, we're going to go down to the else section and we're simply going to show our next button. Because of course, if it is the second time you've arrived on this slide, you would have watched our video. So go ahead and make that change. We'll save that as an action. Click OK and click close. So we'll run that advanced action on enter of the slide, execute advanced actions, and it's the only script I have so far, so it's going to run there. 
So on slide number two, we have our video, and this is event video. And again, one of the differences between event video and slide video is the slide can be any length that you need it to be. In this case, I've only got it to run for half a second, even though this video happens to be several minutes long. I will make sure that when I select the video that autoplay is selected. I don't want the user to have to click on the video. It really doesn't matter what skin you select. In HTML5, it's going to replace it with a generic skin that they'll see no matter what. The other thing to remember about event video is how the timing works. So it's going to pause the entire slide. So notice there are no navigation controls. The slide will pause until they reach the end of the video, regardless of whether they play through once or if they pause it, they rewind it, they scrub forward. We won't go forward back to our slide number three unless they reach the end of the actual video itself. So I think we're all set to go. Let's do a preview of this project in HTML5 in browser. So here we are with our project. Notice I've turned off the built-in skin for Adobe Captivate. The reason is anytime you're not presenting a linear course, I don't think it makes sense to provide them with linear controls. I'm only going to present the learner with the controls that I've provided them. So let's go ahead and hit begin. This takes us to slide number three. And of course, the only thing that we can do here is click our mock video to pretend like we're starting the video. Now, of course, it's going to jump back to slide number two, where the actual video resides. And now, of course, they can watch the video. They have their own controls to pause. They can fast forward through the video. They can go full screen if they wish. And once they get towards the end of the video, they'll continue to play the video, presumably. And when the final frame of the video is over, it'll automatically go back to slide number three. And now, of course, the next button is available. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.